So I'm back to this hive that I thought was uh, swarmed or requeened or something, their population diminished. So I took their third box of honey, just got that off the escape and in the truck. They've still got a pretty good population. So what I did is I gave them a third box back and a feeder with a gallon of syrup. And when I come and do my next inspection, if they are up here working and drawing wax, then I'd almost guarantee that they're queen, queen right. And if they're not doing anything and they're mean, then I'm sure they're queen less. And in either case, I think this is a good thing to do. It gives them food and buys me just a little bit of time to figure out what's going on with them without having to dive in right now because I need to go work honey. Sunday after church. Funny house is holding 25% humidity. It's 90 or 92 degrees in here. I just turned on the air conditioner. And we're going to extract. I'm gonna to try to get it through all these supers this afternoon and evening. Uh, that would be good. That'd be really good. Got a few little things to do first. I'm gonna fill up a couple of buckets. The extractors have been draining. Uh, clean the floor. That's a pretty common thing to do in a honey house, I'm afraid. So this entire super was uncapped. Um, I had a double medium that drew that out and filled it on this little flow that we've had recently. And you would think it's too wet to extract, and it may have been, but after three days in the drying room, I just checked it and it's running just under 15% moisture. So I really should have extracted this yesterday or even the day before yesterday. Uh, I've let the honey get a little too thick. And that's causing me to get blowouts. So thick honey with a honey house, it's a little bit too hot. I let it get up to about 95. I think uh, it's causing the comb to be a little weaker. I'm getting more blowouts than normal. I also think that's a problem with my uncapper and that's something that I need to something I really need to take a look at for next year I'm gonna have to do something with my uncapping solution I don't know exactly what yet though there's pluses and minuses to everything one of my biggest problems is space I just I don't have I don't think I've got space for a silver queen which is what I would really want I just don't think I've got the space if the color is showing up but this is very reddish it's uncapped it's fresh so I'm guessing that is smooth sumac the flavor is really really good well you kids that sure is, a lot of honey. is that a lot of honey yeah. you got bucket loads <laughs> that was almost filled up yeah. Because it has a lot of color in it. You're going to be on YouTube. You realize that, don't you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so I sort of let things cool off overnight. You know, it naturally cools off. I, I didn't leave the air conditioner on or anything. So I came in this morning and it was like 87, 88 degrees in the honey house. And yesterday I think it was like 92, 94. And I had a ton of tear out with this uncapper, the Simple Harmony Farms uncapper. I think it's a combination of things. I've got really thick honey this year, which is, I've never seen that before. I mean, two years ago we were so humid all through spring that the bees were capping 19% honey. I had some honey capped at over 19%, so drying it down was essential. This year, I don't know if it matters if I dry it or not. In fact, I may be making things more difficult for myself because I assumed that it was going to be wet because it, it's always wet. I'm in Tennessee. But um, anyway, the change in temperature overnight, the box is cooling off just a little bit. The 
uncapper started working like I'm used to it. I'm not getting the tear out. Yesterday it was actually pulling the uh, the wax off of the frame in big chunks. Some, you know, it nearly took all the wax off of an entire side of a frame, which uh, sent my blood pressure up. Uh, wax is valuable and that is really aggravating. So this morning it's working the way it's supposed to, which leads me to think this thing's just finicky. It's essential that you have the right temperature. It works best with the right thickness of frame. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna outgrow this sooner rather than later. It's just a money, a money question. I've got somebody video bombing me here. You sneaking in? You got anything to say? No. <laughs> I've been waiting for this all week. I got wet supers put on my strong hives in this yard, which should be a good sourwood yard. I've got a lot of sourwood around here. And they are packing very thin nectar into this wet super. There's no doubt that's sourwood. No doubt. Oh man, that's good. Well, I hope they make a lot of it. Woo! We need a lot. <laughs> We've got it, now we just need volume. That hive is a caution. Goodness. Overwintered is one or two, two or three medium frames of bees on a double screen board. They were so small, I overwintered them as a nuke. And I equalized into them, boosted them, gave them foragers. I've already harvested one or two supers. No, I haven't harvested any supers off them yet because the queen was up in the top lane. I'm waiting on all this to age out. There's brood in these. But they had a box of foundation here. We're drawing it out. I just put a wet super back on them. That's probably my most productive hive this year. And I just realized I never put them on a regular bottom board. That's ridiculous. Bees falling off the entrance trying to get in. And they've done all that with that little bitty entrance. Well, that is not what I was wanting to find in my honey super. She's got this wet super laid up with eggs. I shook this hive down, put an excluder above the third. I've got three supers on here, including this wet super I put on last week. Somehow I either missed this queen or she was a virgin, came back and squeezed through the excluder, got up in my supers. Oh well, at least I know where she is. I'll just go run her in the entrance. So this hive that I thought may be queenless, I put an undrawn super on them with a gallon of syrup last week. Didn't have time to fool with them. They have done nothing in there. They have eaten a little bit of syrup but uh, they're packing a lot of pollen and some nectar in. So I dove down into the bottom two boxes and they don't have a queen. Um, it's been long enough now, even if it was a virgin, she should be showing signs. They're roaring and unhappy. And I don't have a candy cage. So I'm gonna take this nuke. I'm gonna go in there and find the queen. I wish I had a candy cage. I just put some blue tape over the opening and I'll stick their queen in that, combine this nuke with that hive, and then I'll have to come back at the end of the week and, um, and manually release her. I guess I could let her stay in there for a week, but I'd prefer not to. 
Um, this will give me a chance to see acceptance. And if they're acting right, when I come back, then I'll just manually release her and she'll take that hive over. The foragers for this hive will probably drift to that one, which is fine. It could use a boost. So preserving resources. So this hive is drawing a little bit of foundation. You can see the different colors there. The red, I believe, is probably sumac or maybe something else. And then the, the more clear, the uh, real very, very light amber nectar coming in is sourwood. There's, there's no doubt about that. Very distinctive taste. This is a wet super I put on here last week. It looks like they are actually starting to draw it out some, so they must be filling at least these center frames. If that is sourwood in there, then they're gonna get another super. Just in case, just in case they'll use it. Same deal here. This wet super's been on five days, I believe. As long as I've got wet supers and potential sourwood, I'll keep supering them. Misty, rainy right now. Bees don't like it. Hives that are normally, you know, nice and peaceful, easy, fun to work. They're coming out ready for war. <laughs> That's okay, though. I don't hold that against them just when they're mean to me and they shouldn't be that uh, they get a red push pin and they get weeded out. I, I cut them a break on rainy days. What in the world is that? What is that? So my horizontal hive went queenless. It swarmed once or twice or three times, who knows, and did not requeen. They've got laying worker cells in here. <laughs> so it's a laying worker hive, which is hard to fix, but I need to fix it because I can't just shake this equipment out and reuse it somewhere else. These are deep frames and I don't have any other deep frames. I do have a spacer in here so these are mediums i've got 10 mediums and then the rest are deeps so what i did is i took a very small nuke just three frames of bees there's a queen in here who is caged and i taped over the uh the candy plug so the bees the her bees of course will feed her i'm gonna leave in leave her in here for like five or six days um, I've got to leave for the weekend. I can't come back. So she's going to be in here like five or six days before I, I manually release her. Hopefully that will allow brood pheromone and queen pheromone to travel over. I did put her over here on the edge, so it'll be a little bit slower release. They're, they're not really over here much. We'll see how this works. I don't have a lot of optimism. I think what I... I think what would increase my odds is if I took every frame out of here, took it 100 yards away, shook it out, forced the bees to fly back, and then put a bigger, stronger nuke in here with a queen and a candy cage. I think that would be the way to fix it. But uh, I don't have all that here today, and it's raining, and the bees are going to be ill. So we're going to try this and see if it works. So I'm trying to plan my workout for the next couple of weeks. And boy, it's a little daunting. This is Tuesday and I've gotten through all of my hives this week. I found out that I've got two, maybe three bee yards that are making sourwood honey right now. And I've got, uh, I've got to graft this week in the next few days, hopefully. And um, I'm going to be needing boxes in the next couple of weeks to transfer nukes out of my mating nukes and into their own nukes. 
So I've got to get around the boxes made and wax dipped. I've got to get frames assembled for all those boxes, get foundations put in them. It's a lot to do. And then I've got some you know, life stuff going on too. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday this week, I'm taking my son to uh, a Cub Scout camp. It's in Lebanon, Tennessee, a really nice place. So we're gonna go do that. And then I'll be back to work on Monday, Tuesday, and then we're leaving for Georgia to visit my wife's parents. <laughs> so I'll be out of the state or incapacitated like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, eight, eight days out of the next two weeks. Uh, So I just got a uh, hundred supers assembled, put together, and I'm preheating my wax tank. I found that if I put some heat to it with one burner for you know several hours and liquefy the tank on day one, then I can come back tomorrow morning and it won't take me but two or three hours to get the tank up to temperature. So it works out pretty pretty good this way. You know, I can do wooden wear and watch the tank and um, let it heat up and stuff. I'm tired of assembling boxes and frames. I'm just getting tired of it. I can do the math and it does pay, but these boxes are tight. The notches on them are tight. So I've got to pound those in with a rubber mallet and some boxes that have just perfect notches. I can assemble 24 an hour. Figure I save two or two fifty a box by assembling myself, and you know that's fifty bucks an hour. That's pretty easy to justify for me. But with these, I'm assembling like fifteen or eighteen an hour, and man, there's a lot of other things I could be doing. And it, it, you know, I'm willing to work for that. I, I'm not. A, I'm not afraid of work. But I've only got so many hours available, and I get two or three things that stack up that all have to get done right now. Uh, I should be bottling honey today. I've got a bunch of wholesale orders to get out, but I'm going to run out of equipment. So I got to take care of the bees first. It's, uh, there's too much to do and not enough of me. So I'm going to have to really think about next year, whether I'm going to do unassembled equipment again, or if I'm just going to buy assembled equipment and hit the easy button, you know, wax, I'll still wax dip it myself. I've got the tank and the infrastructure to do that. It makes sense to do it. That doesn't take that much time, but it is a chunk of work when you start talking about hundreds of supers, you know, one, one man getting those put together and I don't have a heated shop. I don't have a heated wood shop. So during the winter time, it's not like I can go heat the shop up above you know, 47 degrees, which, which is what tight bond needs. Um, there may be two months, two or three months where we don't get daytime temperatures that allow me to, to assemble anything. So if I had a heated shop and an employee, it'd be a different story. But with just me and the limitations I've got, I'm leaning towards just doing assembled equipment next year. Finally got around to putting a threaded union on my bottling tank set up. So I've got a one inch NPT here, a threaded union, a couple of close nipples, and then an L-type ball valve. In this position, the honey comes out and goes this way to my no-drip valve. 
if I move the handle over here, it'll come out and go to this uh, fitting. And that will allow me to fill buckets or empty the tank or hook up a hose and run to a bottling machine at some point in the future. And then if the handle's in that position, it shuts the tank off completely. So I disassembled all this when I uh, finished hunting for the past year, cleaned out everything, um, you know, lubed everything up, put this on. This is working really well. That, that fitting allows me to level this thing out and it puts enough tension that I can operate that handle without anything moving, which is a problem I had last year is this would try to drop down when I was filling just from pulling on this handle. So that's working pretty good. I'm happy with that. That's an improvement. So I refilled my wax tank because it was too low and obviously I put several pounds too much wax in here or those boxes are too wet. I'm not putting too much wood in. I'm only putting six boxes in at a time. It'll hold 10, 10 mediums. So that's not the issue. I think it's got too much wax in it or I've got a moisture issue in those. I intend to have a solar kiln at some point and I'll probably start putting boxes in that to make sure they're good and dry so this doesn't happen. But it's okay, I'm gonna recapture the wax. Got the spillway there with bucket lined with parchment paper, so I'll be able to recapture all that. Not too big of a deal. That spillway is a must on these though. Well-designed spillway is an absolute must. Good, buddy. Really good. Hives are really working. Be this early in the day. So this yard is probably my best chance of catching sourwood. This hive here is actually a swarm that I caught out of one of my production colonies this year. And they drew out almost four mediums. I stuck a honey super on them right as this flow started. This was a drawn nine frame super and I'm seeing white wax they're drawing that out that is a wonderful sign they might actually fill that up I don't know how much weight is in there but uh, that's a good sign That's definitely sour wood. Goodness. Woo, boy, that's good. There's no doubt about that. I don't think they're, they will fill another one, but I'm gonna give them another one. Just in case. That's not what you want to see. This little nuke is getting slimed. I don't know why they're not viable. Um, the only reason they haven't been robbed out is probably because of the sourwood flow. 
I don't know if the queen died or what. It was a queen I made this year. So, I don't know. I'm that stuff right there is water white. That is clover honey. White clover. Good flavor. Doesn't have a ton of character, but it's got some. It's good. So there's the hive I want to graft out of. And this is the next strongest hive I've got in this yard. So I'm going to use them as my cell builder. I had one there that was going, that was queenless. So I combined them. This one, uh, I think the queen is in this box. I found eggs in there. This box had uh, some emerging brood in it, but I didn't find any eggs. So I think she's in here, I didn't see her. This is a box of foundation with a feeder in it to give all these bees somewhere to go. This hive is packed. So I'll come back tomorrow. This is a honey super, I've got an excluder here. They've got a honey in that as well. So I'll come back tomorrow and see where they are drawing emergency cells. And then I'll know for sure which part of it is queenless and I'll graft into whichever part is queenless. And whichever part is queenless will end up on the bottom because that, that's where I want um, all the foragers to return to. I want the bottom to get super strong and that be the queenless part. This is a pretty easy way to set up a cell builder. Works really good. Those double screen boards, I, I really like them for this. And you know, this hive is in the process of making honey and after three days, they'll go back to making honey. Uh, I'll take the grafts, the box that the grafts are in, move them up above the queen excluder. They'll just keep making honey and be a queen right uh, cell finisher. This is a real pretty spot. We got these river bottoms that are in corn right now. Field corn, not sweet corn. And you can see the river bluff, big horseshoe bend river bluff there. And there are light spots you can see light spots like in that hollow right there those are basswood trees that are in full bloom there's one there they they start out looking sort of silvery and then they turn that light brownish color as the blooms start to open there's a lot of it there's also some sour wood open i don't know if it's flowing here or not i don't know if the basswood is flowing here or not but First hive I opened told me something is flowing. So we're gonna find out what this is. That's basswood. Definitely basswood. Real light color. It's got this nice minty flavor. Very fresh. Yeah, that's good. That's good honey. Let's try that again. That's clover. So they're mixing some basswood and some clover. Well, that's okay. Both those are good honeys. They're doing this. I think I'll give them another super. That's a nuke. This is one of Corey Stevens' queens. It's a nuke from this year, so they're they're fresh. You know, they got a young queen in there. They, they're looking to grow. They may actually fill it where some of these older queens, they're getting ready for the dearth. They, um, they really slow down this time of year. So this queenless hive, I introduced a nuke into them, queen right nuke, the mated queen. I taped over the uh, the cap there. Hopefully you can see that. They've chewed that up, but they haven't been able to let her out. It's been five days. 
and they have not pulled any emergency cells. I opened the hive up, they're calm. So I'm just gonna direct release her. I think this has been a success. Come on girl, you can do it. There you go. So I really don't like these open feeders with the sticks in them, the stick floats. When they're empty, hive beetles get in there and hide under the sticks and the bees can't get to them. And also, when these things are empty, uh, some of my nukes are building an excessive amount of wax down in there. And uh, I've actually had a queen get in there and start laying in that comb that they're building off of these. I don't like that at all. I really prefer the Man Lakes cap and ladder. I think they, they work the best. So I'm finishing up my, I've been through almost every hive today. It's Monday, June 26th. Just got back from scout camp with my son last night and we're both wore out, but I needed to get through my hives today. So got some good, bad and ugly that I've seen. The good is I'm gonna get at least a little bit of sourwood honey. Um, maybe a few supers, maybe more than that. I don't know. You know, and, and it's going to be enough that I think I will actually keep it as a varietal instead of letting it mix. It'll be a, a you know, two, three, four, five buckets, something like that. And it may not be enough that I want to sell it as a varietal, but I really like that honey and I'll keep it for myself and give it to landowners. Um, who I'm, uh, you know, I've got bees on and stuff like that as a special gift in addition to my usual rent. So that's good. It's encouraging. Um, also making clover honey. We've got uh, some hives that are making, you know, filling supers of white clover honey. And I've tasted a little bit of basswood, not a lot. I think they are putting that down in the brood nest. I think they're backfilling the brood nest. The so that's the good, the bad. Uh, got a lot of, I don't know how to word this, but I've got a lot of hives that um, are beginning to stagnate. You know, they, they, they were big in spring and they are locally adapted. So they know the dearth is coming and now they're just backfilling the brood nest. They won't draw fresh wax. They don't want to, hoard honey at this point in the season and then i've got some bees that um are doing really good so you know i'm trying to churn through my genetics over the next couple of years and and get bees that um will be more productive for me you know since i'm really looking at this with an economic perspective now the ugly man i've had i think i pulled down three uh, queenless hives today that were laying worker had one little nuke that uh, actually two little nukes that had uh, they were getting slimed by hive beetles and that's just no fun and then I just went and looked at my mating yard and when I made these mating nukes up I pulled in a couple of hives that were feisty but queen right and I had one or two that I thought were queenless but they had not gone laying worker yet or were close to going laying worker. And um, I split them up. Like I'd take a frame out of each hive and mix them. Was, that is supposed to help with queen acceptance. And I don't think I'm ever going to use bees or resources, bees especially from queenless hives in mating nukes ever again. Um, I was able to fix some of those with a new queen, with a queen cell, or a, a virgin in a candy cage, but I'm getting a higher failure rate than normal, and I can't, I don't have an excess of hives, so I don't need to be taking chances. Um, I wish that I had shaken those bees out and given their boxes to productive hives so um, I think that was a mistake and I don't know how many queens I'm gonna get out of that last batch it's not gonna be a great success rate 
because of my mistakes. So coming up, uh, we leave Wednesday evening for Georgia. I may go see a uh, friend and mentor of mine while I'm down in Georgia, but I don't think I'm gonna take the cameras with me this time. So, um, got some business to tend to down there. I'm looking at some trailers and stuff and uh, trying to make a business trip out of a you know mixed family fun kind of thing. And when I get back, I'll have to pull sourwood supers in immediately and get them extracted and get them put back out for shining sumac because that's just about to hit. I've got a couple of yards that are near clear cuts and there's a ton of shining sumac in it, which is also known as dwarf sumac, I think. It's got a few common names. Uh, Rus capilina is the Latin name. And I'm gonna try to catch all that I can. I'll have to get through those mating nukes and see what I've got there. Uh, I set up a, a cell builder today. I need to graft tomorrow or Wednesday. And I need to graft tomorrow because I've got to uh, switch them back on Wednesday. I've got to do that a day early. And I'll have to make nukes and all that good stuff when I get back. It's gonna be busy. I've got another, and then I'll have to jump on my mite treatments as well uh, right away. And also harbo assays because I'm gonna start looking for VSH traits in my bees. So. Um, man, that's going to be fun. Lots of fun. I have to jump on Harbo assays and then jump on mite treatments so I can uh, identify resistant colonies before I start treating those colonies. Uh, it's winding down though. The, the, I see the light at the end of the tunnel now. It's just going to be a slow decline into fall. And, uh, I just hope I go to, go to fall with enough hives and they are healthy enough that I can come out in the spring and get to where I need to be. I've got a lot of thinking to do about my operation. Like how big do I want to get? You know, my wife works full time. She's got a demanding job. Uh, she does not have flexibility in her schedule to take care of sick kids and things like that. So I've got to keep that flexibility in my schedule. And if I get 500 colonies at certain times a year, I'm not going to have any flexibility. You know, it'll be all I can do to keep up. So I got to figure out how much money I need to make, how much money I have to make and still keep flexibility and get a hive count and a business model that will support that. Got a lot of thinking to do with that. Also got a lot of thinking to do on double medium um, schemes the hives I've got set up as double mediums are outperforming my hives with, you know, they're, they're like four and then put an excluder above that. They're out, just outperforming. You know, that they are drawing wax right now while my big hives are not. They're back filling the brood nest. So, um, you know, those more compressed brood nests are really productive and I'm, I'm liking that a lot. I need to put some thought into that. A lot of things to put together in my operation over winter. I'd like to say thanks to Chad Carroll for donating to the channel. I appreciate that. QA this week. I've got another question for you guys. Uh, where can I get pallets of sugar? Like a, you know, a pallet of 2,500 pounds of sugar, uh, something like that. Restaurant supply, distributors. Uh, there is a domino sugar place florida crystal in nashville but i i don't know if they only deal with tractor trailer loads or if i can go pick up a pallet it's the only thing i've been able to find i don't know if there's restaurant suppliers or or what so if you guys have got any ideas there uh, especially if you have actual experience with it instead of i think you can do this or i think you can do that you know if you're buying pallets of sugar let me know how you're doing it and maybe i can figure out something similar uh, that's something i'm gonna have to get into before next year um, scrounging sugar at walmart is just not working especially this time of year i'll go to two or three different walmarts and find 17 bags you know 
450, 500 pounds, I need to be able to go pick up a pallet and it's just more time efficient. I got, I've got to get that. I've got to get that ability. So if you've got any questions, leave, feel free to leave them in the comments. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.